This is Rachel and I wanted to talk about how I got a vampire basically keeping an eye on me wherever I go. Like this person comes and keeps an eye on me randomly, sometimes long periods at a time and sometimes just a little bit. But they really don't bother me and they haven't done anything to hurt me. If they're doing anything while I'm sleeping, I have no idea. But it's kind of my fault. And it, this is a fair warning. So, I was on a search for vampires. And actually, um, I ended up, I was in a severe depression. I was having a lot of problems. And I ended up um, hanging out with this dude. Now, this dude, because he was like, you know, werewolves and vampires. Like, this dude... He had, like, half his face was, like, a scar, and it was dripping, like, blood, kind of, and it was always moist. It was, like, droplet, red droplets, but not dark like blood, and his whole face was raised like a scar, and he said it was a birthmark. I mean, it, it was, like, half his face. He said it was a birthmark. He said he worked at a bar. I have no idea. I mean, I've been to the bar, but I don't know. You know, whatever. So, he there. It, this was in Olympia, Washington. And he was in an apartment building that was next to a little park. Now, this park was partially a paved park in the woods. But part of it was a boardwalk floating on the water. And I'm not talking about Tenant Lake. That is way up near Canada by Belling, past Bellingham. I'm talking about this was a park in Olympia, Washington that had part of it floating on a boardwalk. Anyway, on a body of water. So we're walking through and I'm looking up and, you know, we, uh, we're on the paved part. And I'm looking up and there's freaking dead squirrels and dead birds hanging off these branches that were so high. And this guy was so overweight. There's no way he was climbing the trees to throw these up there. And they were kind of limping over the branches. And I said, what is this about? And he said uh, that there was a war going on between the vampires and the werewolves. And this was a, a war zone. So anyway, we walked through and we kind of walked through the, like the, the boar walk or whatever. And then... You know, we went back to his place. And he was showing me this knife. And it was all silver. And even the handle was silver. And it had blood all over it. And he was saying that it was werewolf blood. So we're hanging out or whatever. It's getting light. And I'm seeing this. Now the lights are on, first of all. Hey, we're sitting there together, whatever. But a red light comes, um, is floating. This thing is like the size of a diamond. It's floating. I said, what is this? I keep seeing this red light in front of me. And he said it was a little boy that was passed away. And he went into saying how the boy had passed away. So I fall asleep. And I wake up and I feel all funny. And I said, what happened? I don't understand why I feel this way. And he said... That we were visited by one of the vampires because the war zone, you know, was close. And he said that the vampire was trying to do something to me. Obviously, he didn't bite or turn me, but he did something to me. And I guess this is why he changed my heartbeat a little bit. So when I get to near vampires my heartbeat does like an Indian drum like song kind of and when I'm near werewolves I can smell them they, there is like one of the most horrible smells I mean I don't even know how to explain it it kind of smells like mildewy wet nasty dog and it's a really strong scent and usually the scent is where it shouldn't be. There's no reason for it to be, you know, um, at school or, you know, wherever. I'm not sure. So anyway, 
Um, other things, I mean, this dude did. We would go walk in the streets at night in certain areas. Now, weird things were happening. There was this little black cat that kept showing up all over the damn city. Um, that was a hermaphrodite. It was really weird. And, um, there was like something in the woods or something following us that had glowing eyes. Anyway, I didn't really hang around this person that long. I was a little scared of the swampy area on a boardwalk with his little knife with the blood on it. But he did tell me that somebody was going to keep an eye on me for the rest of my life. Now, I thought it was a lie and I thought it whatever... But the truth is, like, it comes and it's there sometimes. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't hurt me. But I guess that, that these vampires can get an interest in somebody. And a lot of the times the interest in somebody starts when the person's looking for them. Because if you're on the internet searching certain things, they know you're looking and I am not lying. Look into the uh, TV series, The Masquerade. They showed like the different, you know, um, clans of vampires and the, the main prince in it. He was found in a motorcycle accident without a drop of blood in him. So, you know, there's all kinds of crazy things. Before I moved to where I live, I was looking up the Massac Brothers, the Butcher Man. Um, they have a mausoleum in Spring Valley, Illinois. Now, it's surrounded by large homes, very wealthy homes. You used to be, it's a small cemetery. Like the size of a little house. And there's a bunch of trees around it. But the rich people kept getting tired of people visiting it. So what they did was. They covered up a lot of the markings on the um, mausoleum. With um, paint. To cover up spots that had blood on it. And. Um. They ended up having it, like, um, not fenced off, but like, you know, that do not cross tape. And then eventually they just let the trees overgrow it. And there's stories where somebody in the 80s had taken the head of one of the brothers. And then the head ended up at the police station. So anyway, um... It's just something that people need to be aware of. Be careful. Because you don't know who you're looking for. If you believe in witches and warlocks and stuff like that. You know, if you look into it, sometimes they find you. Sometimes they figure that out. You know what I'm saying? It's not good to look just because you get depressed. Or because you feel like giving up. I mean... If you feel like giving up and you're depressed, why would you want to live for a hundred years? In, I mean, excuse me, for an eternity? Anyway, it makes no sense. Just be careful. And I know that when it comes to them, if you're not looking up some Twilight movie, if you're digging and digging and digging and digging, you're going to end up coming across the wrong website that keeps track of who you are and your IP address and they will know. They find out. You know what I'm saying? And if that wasn't true, I wouldn't have met this freaky dude with like a bloody face all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I've tried to look up like what condition that is and I have no idea. But this dude is really freaky. But at the time, I was so depressed I didn't care. So anyway, thank you.